Well, hello, friends. Hope you're having a great day today. Hey, guess what? It's Friday, and I'm saying that, and I can't believe another week has come and gone. Man, it just seems like time is flying by. It really is, and so we don't need to waste a moment of it. We need to do everything we can for the kingdom while we got strength and breath to do it. Well, hey, you know what we're talking about? We're in this series that we've titled Rapture 101, and we're looking at that, the, the foundation and fundamental truths the Bible teaches us about the next event on God's prophetic calendar. It's called the rapture, and we need to be ready for this event. It's coming quicker than I believe most of us can even imagine. So what we're doing, we're taking 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians 4, and John 14, and we're breaking down the actual events that are going to happen at the time of the rapture so that we have biblical truth and knowledge. Now, I've told you a couple of days this week, we can get all this knowledge and we can simplify it and make it easy to understand, but if you don't mix faith with it, it'll do you no good. Hebrews 4.2 said, if you don't mix faith with the word when it's preached, it will profit you nothing. And so that's what we need to do. If we want to get something out of this word, if we want it to mean something to us, if we want it to profit us, we've got to mix it with faith. So we've named some things that are going to happen. Number one, the Lord uh, himself is going to descend from heaven at the time of the rapture. He's not sending an angel. He's coming himself. There's going to be a trumpet blast and a great shout that happens at that time. Then the dead in Christ are going to be raised first and given their glorified bodies as it is reconnected with their soul and spirit that has been with the Lord. Number four is, then we that are alive are going to be changed to an immortal state. So, so now God changes us. Now you got to imagine all of this is happening in the twinkling of an eye, faster than you can blink, faster than your pupil can respond to light. That's how fast this thing is going to happen. So it's not going to be like, well, oh, there's the dead. Oh, I'm next. No, 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 no. I, I don't believe you're going to have time for all of that. I just, I just don't think God's going to work that way. But the dead are going to raise first, going to get their glorified bodies. Then if we are alive at the time of the return of Christ, at the time of the rapture, uh, then we're going to be caught up after them and we're going to be changed to an immortal state. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, I say this, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery, or in other words, I'm revealing something brand new to you. That's all that means. We shall not all sleep or be dead, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. We're not going to all be dead. He said, somebody's going to be alive when Jesus returns. I believe I'm going to be one of those. I really, really do from the bottom of my heart. I believe that. And we that are alive at the time of the rapture, we're going to be changed into an immortal state. And we're going to get a brand new glorified body. And number five says, and we will be caught up and reunited with believers who were deceased, we'll meet Jesus Christ in the air, and we shall be with him and them forever. That's what the Bible says. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, we that are alive and remain will be caught up together. That's good, isn't it? We're going to get to see them again. We're going to be caught up together with them in the clouds and meet the Lord. That's going to be the grandest part is that we get to meet the Lord. Now, I'm going to say something. I know I said some things, you know, possibly on Wednesday that kind of made us want to, you know, growl and bark just a little bit because I made some statements about our loved ones being deceased. But it's, it's biblical truth, what I, I told you. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. It's going to be great that we get to see our loved ones, our parents, our our brothers and sisters, you know, if you have that, maybe even if you have a child that has, uh, you know, pre-deceased you, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, that's going to be great to get to see them. But the greatest thing is we get to see the Lord. That, and I want to tell you something. There are entirely too many people, I hear folks say it all the time, there are entirely too many people that say, well, I just... 
I just got to live it now. I, I, I got to serve God. I, I've got to get saved now because I want to see my mama again. Well, well let, me, let me say something. I don't mean no disrespect to your mama or to anybody else that's deceased. But you need to serve God because you want to please him and because you want to see him. Seeing our loved ones, seeing mama and them, that's the fringe benefits of being saved. God says this, if you'll just trust me, I'll bless you this way that you get to see your loved ones again and spend eternity. You don't ever have to be separated again, but don't do it just so you can see them. Do it to please the Lord. Do it to see Jesus. After all, friend, he is the one that died for you. Now, I'll do one more real quick because I think it's important, and that's the last one on our list. Is And this question comes up. Are there any restrictions to who will be part of this rapture? Now, when I say that, I, that kind of uh, immediately you want to say, well, yeah, and then you want to say no when you think about friends and family. Um, we need to understand there are restrictions to this thing called the rapture, and the restriction is we must be saved. We must have faith in Jesus Christ. We must. That, that, is, the, that is the only way that we can legally be taken in this rapture is if we are saved by faith in Jesus Christ. And, and let me say this, it's not just by believing that Jesus exists. The devil believed that he exists. James 2.19 says the devils believe and tremble, so he believes that he exists. But we must believe that we know that faith in Jesus Christ is the only way we can be saved. It's the only way that we can see God. It's the only way we can be holy. It's the only way that we can be righteous enough to stand before a holy God. We must know without a doubt that faith is it. The church has nothing to do with it. The pastor has nothing to do with it. Being a good person and doing good works has nothing to do with it. And I'm going to say something that's popular around in our area seems to be having your name on the church roll has nothing to do with it. God doesn't care where your membership card is. God wants to know, do you have saving faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ at Calvary? And that is the only thing that makes you legal, justifiable, and ready for this thing called the rapture. I realize when I make such a claim that in today's society, it clashes with our mindset, it clashes with the norms of our culture, but this is exactly why it's important for us to have a solid understanding of this issue. I don't want to frighten anybody. I don't want to alarm anybody about talking uh, by talking about restrictions that govern salvation and who goes in the rapture, but I wouldn't be true to the gospel and I wouldn't be true to my Lord if I didn't tell you that if you are not truly born again, you will be left behind. You will not be permitted in this rapture. The rapture is real. It is nearer than I, I imagine that we could ever even believe, but it is not for everybody. It is only for those who are saved. And that is my desire for you, my friend. I trust that the people watching this are all saved, but if somebody happens to get a hold of it, it is not. My desire for you is that you be born again, that you be saved by faith in Jesus Christ, because that is the only thing that prepares us and makes us ready for this great event called the rapture. Well, hey, it's been a great week. I look forward to being in worship with you on Sunday. And then Monday, as we start a brand new series of Take 5 Devotions, until then, God bless you. Have a great weekend. Trust the Lord, my friend. He will never fail you.